spider webs about a patient, a psychiatrist patient who comes to her house late one night um, complaining of his hallucinations getting worse and worse. Um, goes through uh, the situation that he had in the park and then I guess the main inspiration came from reading Salinger's works. That, uh, that's where we started out. We wanted to write um, a script where it was like Salinger's stories where two people met, they talked, and you found out some, something about them, some sort of history, just through their conversation. There wasn't some extreme plot line or anything like that, and that slowly developed into uh, what we had now. Not too much. I'm sure if I had more time, that other influences could come into it and if there was longer um, but because we we are limited to only making a five minute movie um, we only had a week to write it uh, we just kind of stuck with one influence that we wanted to work with and worked for there um, so there wasn't anything I was directly thinking of other than Salinger's works when I wrote this uh, I think we had a crew of it was me and my roommate that wrote it, and we had another cameraman. Um, so I think our crew was only like three or four people in the end. I did very little myself, um, just shooting small little films for high school. Uh, my roommate didn't have much. He had more experience in photography, so I knew um, at least angles um, and framing and things like that. Um, and then the third person that worked with us um, uh, had no experience either. Um, to be honest, there wasn't much preparation just because it was so last minute um, that we found out about Campus Movie Fest that we made the movie for. And we had such a short time period when they gave us our camera and all the equipment to use. Um, but we did a lot of preparation in writing the script we did, uh, and developing the story. Uh, most of our time was spent there, and then kind of last minute threw together uh, the actual movie. Not too much. The only research was from uh, movies like A Beautiful Mind, or we used, I don't know the, the exact branch or the exact models, but we used a Sony camcorder, um, and then I had, uh, I had a couple studio mics for my own personal recording that I used, um, and um, then we used Final Cut Pro on a Mac, a MacBook Pro, and um, yeah, that was about the equipment that we used. The editing process took a couple days. Um, the biggest struggle was uh, we were using two cameras, um, and one was a much lower resolution than the one we were given. Um, so we had that sort of difference between them that would show up uh, in our filmmaking. Um, we had the problem that after we recorded it and we were finished, um, it turned out at the beginning when we wanted two different camera angles, one on the patient and one on the psychiatrist, that we only had two on the patient um, and we didn't have any on the psychiatrist for about half of the shots. Um, so we had to at, we had to just deal with the very beginning, most of it being on the patient, which uh, we really didn't want. Um, and then there was one spot where we were slicing the audio from a different camera and putting it with the camera angle of the second one and uh, we had to spend a lot of time making sure the audio synced up so it, uh, so it looked like the audio was from that camera. Um, I'd say the biggest challenge we faced was not only the time constraint, I think we only had a week to make this, to write everything and then also film it, but also um, we face a challenge in, um, in just being experienced in filmmaking in general, that uh, we were using Final Cut Pro uh, for Mac, 
and nobody in our group had, had any sort of experience with that. Um, so we had to spend a lot of time while we wrote the script uh, also learning how to use uh, that software. For student filmmakers, um, probably resources that um, for us at least, we, uh, when we were given our equipment, we were given equipment on loan. Um, we had a bad mic, um, and luckily I had a mic that could be set up to, to the camera that we could use. Um, but we didn't know any people that could act. Uh, we had to really kind of scrape around to try and find uh, actors, and I had to jump in at the last minute to, to fill the spot. Um, so I'd say probably resources. I wouldn't say too much, just because there aren't any sort of classes in it. Um, that would have to be something all extracurricular, and depending on what majors you take, not too much of that time exists. Um, so I wouldn't say that tech fosters too much of, of a creative uh, environment for filmmakers. I'm David Turk, and this is my movie, The Spider Web. Oh, there you are. I was getting worried. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for all of this. You sounded upset on the phone. It's getting worse. All right, come in and take a seat. So tell me what happened. Why were you so frantic on the phone? I told you. It's getting worse. I have whole days, entire conversations, on the streets, at restaurants, in my classes, whole goddamn classes. And they're not real. Well, have you been taking your medication? Yeah, but that's just the half of it. I have entire days that feel like they're not real at all. Completely fake, it's all in my head. But they're rare, they're real. And I can't tell the difference anymore. You can't what? I can't tell, it's all the same. It's okay, just step me through this. I want to help you. All right, two days ago, it's a, it's a Tuesday I think, mm -hmm. I'm at the park, it's a beautiful day, and I'm just sitting there and I'm, I'm enjoying the lake on the bench and I start dozing off. Next thing I know, this, this girl wakes me up. She, she wakes me up and we start striking up a conversation. I ask her for her name. And she had a name? Yeah, her name was, her name was Carol. And I ask her, you know, uh, we just kind of, we had a conversation. That, that's the best way to put it. And in this conversation, she, she mentioned she wanted to go swinging. So I took her to the swings. You took her away from where she was? I saw no problem in that. At this point, I'd realized nobody else seemed to notice her. Everybody seemed to pay no mind to her. So I didn't think she was real at all. And I saw no problem in taking her to the swings. I took her there, and the next thing I know, I'm punched in the cheek by Carol's dad. He calls me a sicko, calls the cops on me, and I'm sitting in the back of a squad car being brought to the police station for in interrogation. This may seem strange, and I understand your point, but what if the entire situation wasn't real? What are you saying? What if the father, the cop, the questioning, even the police station, what if none of it was real? What if it was all in your head? No, no, I know that was real. The, the air, the breeze, that wasn't in my head, all right? Okay, but look at your face. If you were punched in the jaw. Cheek. Cheek, if you were punched in the cheek, you would have had a bruise by now. I don't think that you ever met this girl. I think that you just wanted it to be real. Why would I want that to be real at all? Why would I ever want myself to be arrested by the cops? I'm telling you right now that it's getting worse and I just need some type of medication that's gonna stop 
All of it. I don't think you're understanding the question. No! You are missing the point! I have a disease! And I need some new medication! Just calm down. Please calm down. My parents. What? My parents. My parents have been making me take these pills and, and come to this ever since I was young. And all the other parents would, would gossip. They would, they would say, there's the crazy kid. No other kids would, would ever talk to me. I don't, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know. I don't even think you're qualified for any of this. You're not qualified. You're horrible! I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean anything that I said there. 